Welcome back. This is Chris, my brother in Christ, Stephen. Welcome back. Uh, date today is uh, August 8th, Year of Our Savior, 2020. And the title of this uh, uh, series is going to be called Mystery Babel. Yes, Mystery Babel Part 4. All right, so when uh, Nimrod was killed for introducing uh, seven stars or seven planet worship, um, we see that he was, um, he was killed on the night of his death. He was, he was dismembered in a bunch of different pieces. On the night of his death, all the images gathered from the ends of the earth were brought into the temple of Babylon to the great golden image of the sun, which was suspended between heaven and earth in this Chaldean legend. It was the command of a certain king that this ringleader, Nimrod, in apostasy be put to death. Who could this king be that was so determinedly opposed to the worship of the host of heaven? The most ancient Hercules, a truly primitive one, was known in Egypt as having the power of the gods, or the true god, and by the spirit fought against the giants. Yes, that was Shem. Shem fought against the giants. Hmm. So he was a very mighty man. And he saw more bloodshed and death than we can possibly imagine, and the corruption and the debauchery. Uh, the title of Hercules was given to him by the pagans whom they worshipped as a grand deliverer or messiah. Who then was most likely to head the opposition to the apostasy from the primitive worship or the original worship of worshipping Jesus Christ? Well, Shem was alive at that time and one of the names of the primitive Hercules in Egypt was Sem. Sem, S-E-M. And that's really easy to connect, even in the English language, Sem and Shem mean the same thing. Right. The Egyptians say that the grand enemy of their god, Shem, overcame Nimrod, not by open violence, but through a conspiracy with 72 of the leading men of Egypt. Once Nimrod was in Shem's power, he was put to death, and then his body cut into pieces. His body was cut into pieces and sent to different parts of the country. That's confirmed in Wilkinson, Volume 5, page 17, found in Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop, page 63. 72 was a number of judges, both civil and sacred, required to rule according to Egyptian law regarding such a high offense of that of Osiris. Another name for Nimrod. 72 judges? 72 judges. Because there's 72 pentagrams against uh, around the uh, apotheosis of George Washington. Oh, yes, in the the yeah. uh, dome yeah, and, yeah, the, and dome. Uh, the Capitol building. Yeah, and it's like interesting. 72. There's 72 pyramids on the back of the, on the, on 72 bricks on the pyramid of the back of the dome. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. Mm hmm. Um, so we see the cutting of the dead body in pieces is paralleled in the Bible with the cutting of the dead body of the Levite's concubine mentioned in Judges 19.29. Both tribunals were necessary to determine whether his body would be buried or not. The judges were so convinced as to the enormity of offense which Nimrod had committed that they gave up the offender to an awful death and to ignominy right to the ignominy um, after it as a terror to any who might afterwards tread in his steps so that's why it went underground folks if they go whoa if they can kill a giant as powerful as Nimrod that founded the first the post city the first post city of the flood in a tower we better go underground because we're not as powerful as Nimrod. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Judges of Egypt made a solemn declaration in their name that whosoever should do as Osiris or Nimrod had done, so should it be done to him. So should he also be cut in pieces. The sympathizers of the combined system of irreligion and despotism set up Nimrod, ultimately Satan, had intense abhorrence to all who shared in the conspiracy to slay the mighty hunter. 
The chief actor Shem was stigmatized as Typhu or the evil one. So Shem, the appointed one, was made by his enemies the desolator or destroyer, right? Today, evil is, uh, evil is good and good is evil. That's what we see today. Um, the great Egyptian Hercules who overcame the giants was known by several names. One of the names of Sem or Shem was Khan, C-H-O-N or K-H-O-N, which signifies to lament or priest of the Most High. Shem was or Sem was a priest of the Most High. He killed giants, he slayed giants, and he also slayed the mighty hunter, the mighty one in the earth, Nimrod, and cut him up into pieces and sent him, sent his pieces to his lieutenants, and they went underground. They were scared. And that's why we have the mystery religion going on today. Mm -hmm. Now when Shem had so powerfully wrought upon the minds of men as to induce them to make a terrible example of the great apostate, and when that apostate's dismembered limbs, Nimrod, were sent to the chief cities, cities, where no doubt his system had been established, it will be readily perceived in these circumstances, if idolatry was to continue, if above all it was to step in advance, it's, it was indispensable that it should operate in secret, in a mystery. That's where you get mystery Babylon. Mm -hmm. mystery this religion. mystery Babylonian religion now went underground when Shem killed Nimrod and it cut him up into pieces. Cutting him up into pieces. Might want to start looking into the myth of Osiris. All right. Uh, yes, we're going to get into Egypt finally. I'm almost there. The terror of an execution inflicted on one so mighty as Nimrod made it needful that for some time to come at least the extreme caution should be used. In these circumstances then began there can hardly be a doubt that the system of mystery which having Babylon for its center had spread over the world, yes, the entire world, in these mysteries under the seal of secrecy, yes, seal of secrecy like we have in Freemasonry today, Freemasonry is part of it, folks, um, and the sanction of an oath, and by means of all the fertile resources of magic, men were gradually led back to all the idolatry that had been publicly suppressed. Well, new features were added to that idolatry that made it still more blasphemous than before that magic and idolatry, magic is sex magic, because that's what happened in the Garden of Eden, folks, and idolatry were twin sisters and came into the world together. We have abundant evidence. He, or Zoroaster, Zoroaster, right? Zoro meaning the seed, um, says just in the historian quote was said to be the first of the first that invented magic arts and that most diligently studied the motions of the heavenly fathers end quote as taken from two babylons pages 66 to 67. this all involves planet worship that we participate today folks we're a part of the problem not a part of the solution that's not very popular to say. Nimrod established the science of magic and astronomy. The secret system of the mysteries established vast facilities for imposing on the senses of the initiated by various tricks and artifices of magic. Then at least the great god, the central object of worship, Osiris, Tammuz, Nimrod, or Adonis was revealed to the initiates in a way to soothe their feelings and engage their blind affections. The magical art to capture the minds of men was none other than that now made in use 
of its modern phantasmagoria. I believe that deals with magic, folks. Mm -hmm. Thus, the whole system of the secret of the mysteries of Babylon was intended to glorify a dead man, whereas body parts were cut into pieces and disseminated across the whole of the land. And when once established, the worship of one dead man was established. The worship of many more was sure to follow. The way paid for the bringing in of all the abominations and crimes. Yes, sacrificing children is a crime against God of which the mysteries right. became the scenes. For to, for to those who like not to retain God in their knowledge, for those who retain not to retain God in their knowledge, Luke 19 verse 14, who preferred some visible object of worship, a spinning globe, right? suited to the sensu uh, sensuous feelings of their carnal minds, nothing could seem a more uh, cogent reason for faith or practice than to hear with their own ears a command given forth amid so glorious a manifestation, apparently by the divinity they adored. Semiramis or Isis, Isis, Semiramis, Nimrod, also named uh, Osiris, or Horus, or Tammuz. Nimrod's wife, Isis, or Semiramis, gained glory from her dead and deified husband. Yep. And in time, both of them, under the names of Rhea and Nin, or goddess, mother and son, were worshipped with incredible Enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Their image were set up everywhere and adorned. In Babylon, the posthumous child inherited all his father's glory. The son was worshipped in his mother's arms and came to be the favorite type of the Madonna's divine son. As Christ in the Hebrew of the Old Testament was called Adonai. The Lord, so Tammuz, was called Adon or Adonis. <laughs> Under the name of Mithras, Tammuz was worshipped as the mediator, as the mediator and head of the covenant of grace. He was styled after Baal Bereth, Lord of the covenant, counterfeiting the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why people say today, they go, well, Jesus is just that little child. And, you know, it's the mother goddess worship that goes back to Babylon. But they don't understand that, that they, Babylon, borrowed it from Eve, found yeah. right here in the Bible. And most Christians don't have a clue. Right. All right, let's talk about Egypt, folks. Egypt, right? So Nimrod was cut into a bunch of pieces, was he not? Yes, he was. All right, so Nimrod was mythologized. mythologized. Say that ten times fast. Yeah, right. That's a myth, a usually traditional story of ostensibly historical events that serves to unfold part of the worldview of a people or explain a practice, belief, or tradition that has grown up around something or someone, especially one embodying the ideals and institutions of a society. In Osiris, the Egyptian god of the underworld and husband brother of Isis. So Osiris is the myth of Nimrod and Isis is the myth of Samaramis. Samaramis and she, using magic, had Horus, which the Babylonian name would be Tammuz, and we know that Tammuz was worshipped. That's why Israelites continually worshipped Mystery Babylon or the religion of Egypt 
throughout the Old Testament over and over again. So you see this, this is Isis is the Egyptian nature goddess, wife, sister of Osiris. And then you have Set. Set in the, in the Egyptian. This is a very ancient, one of the, yes, the most important Egyptian religions of all ancient Egypt. Fact. Mm -hmm. Now, Set is an Egyptian god of deserts. Now, Set was the primitive Hercules of Shem or Sem that killed Nimrod, but now he's a big meanie. He's the villain now. Because mm -hmm. remember, Satan is always turning things upside down. Right. All right. In ancient Egyptian religion, Lord of the Red Desert Land, in the Osiris myth, we should look at the Osiris myth, the most important Egyptian myth, Set is portrayed as, he's portrayed as the usurper who killed and mutilated his brother Osiris. Well, they definitely were related, folks. They definitely were related. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what about the Osiris myth, Stephen? You want to talk about that for a yeah, little bit? Yeah, Osiris called Usir one of the most important gods of ancient Egypt. The origin of Osiris is obscure, but he was a local god of Osiris in Lower Egypt and may have been a personification or chthonic underworld fertility. Uh, by about 2400 BCE, however, Osiris clearly played a double role. He was both a god of fertility and the embodiment of dead, the dead and resurrected king. So he's a god of fertility. Yes. That's important to remember. God yes. of fertility. This dual role was in turn combined with the Egyptian concept of divine kingship. The king at death became Osiris, god of the underworld, and the dead king's son, the living king, was identified with Horus as god of the sky. Oh, Horus, uh, Osiris and Horus were thus father and son. The goddess Isis was the mother of the king and was thus the mother of Horus and the consort of Osiris. Okay. The god Seth was considered the murderer of Osiris and adversary of, ad, adversary of Horus. Okay, so what happened to Osiris? Um, let's see here. Um, According to the form of the myth reported by the Greek author Plutarch, Osiris was slain or drowned by Seth, who tore the corpse up into 14 pieces and flung them over Egypt. Okay. Eventually, Isis and her sister, Nephthys, uh, found and buried all the pieces except the phallus, thereby giving new life to Osiris, who thenceforth remained in the underworld as a ruler and judge. His son Horus successfully fought against Seth, Avenging Osiris and becoming the new king of Egypt. Okay, so can they see that, Stephen? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So I mean, Stephen just said a a uh, a tremendous amount. Let's take a moment on that. Um, we see uh, once again this is relating to Nimrod. Now it's mythologized into a religious system. So his death is now a religious system that was passed from Mystery Babylon to Egypt. This is the mystery Babylonian religion of a counterfeit savior, right? Yep. This is the this is the Babylonian trinity that I held up. Um, so, what do we see? We see that Osiris, or Nimrod, he was killed by Set, or Sem, or Shem, or the primitive Hercules that was the great giant slayer because he was killing giants in Genesis chapter 6. Um, what happened is he cut his body parts into 14. I'm not saying that Shem did this, but this is what Satan's going to do. He incorporated. I'm not saying that Shem cut Nimrod's body and cut his penis off. I'm not saying that, but this is the religion now. Okay? It's a story. It's a story now. Because Satan's a pervert. Alright? I don't think Shem would do that. But they're going, they worship sex. 
That's what it started in the Garden of Eden. So Osiris is the god of fertility. He's the god of fertility. Why? Because he has a phallus. Because of his male anatomy. Okay? We're adults here because he has a penis. Or he had one. Now, Set cuts it off and distributes the 14 parts all across the land, which corroborates and corresponds to Sem cutting Nimrod's parts and distributing them all to his lieutenants where it went underground. This is the mystery Babylonian religion. Now it's the mystery Egyptian religion, right? right. right. And Isis is, is now... Semiramis is now Isis. You hear that a lot. Isis all over. But this is the mother goddess worship going back ultimately to Eve. She's able to cut, you know, with magic and her sister able to find 13. 13, the first mention of 13 in the Bible is means rebellion. The 14th piece was swallowed by a fish, right? All right. So the 14, the missing piece is the phallus are the penis of Osiris and that's where you get the erecting pun intended of the obelisk the obelisk originating in Egypt why are they originating in Egypt because that's the commencement that's the fountainhead of mystery Babylon and so I'm gonna finish my thought my brother go ahead okay I'm going to finish my thought. So what happens is she's able to gather, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not an expert on all this stuff. So the one piece she gets, she sews them all together, and you can find this even in the sarcophagus and uh, Egyptian archaeology, what they found. But he's, Osiris is now missing his phallus or his penis. So what she does is she constructs it in magic, and she's able to impregnate herself with that created phallus and that results in Osiris being reborn in the form of Horus or Tammuz. And that is where you get I-H-S, right? Mm -hmm. IHS is Os uh, Isis, Horus, and Set. Set or Seb, I think, whatever. But anyway, that is the the um, the sign of the Society of Jesus, which is the military order of the Roman Catholic Church of the Mystery Babylonian system that is spread to the Roman Empire and throughout the world. Okay, go ahead, my brother. Is anything that I said was accurate? Oh yeah, yeah. I okay. Just, uh... I just was Man. going to elaborate a little bit. Yeah. Osiris is not only ruler of the dead, but also the power that granted all life from the underworld, from sprouting vegetation to the annual flood of the Nile River. From about 2000 BCE onward, it was believed that every man, not just deceased kings, became associated with the Osiris at death. <laughs> this identification with Osiris, however, did not imply resurrection, for even Osiris did not rise from the dead. Instead, it signified the renewal of life both in the next world and through one's descendants on earth. In this universalized form, Osiris's cult spread throughout Egypt, often joining with the cults of local fertility and underworld deities. Okay, so now you have you have the worshiping the, the planet, specifically the sun, yep. and the earthly representation of the sun is Osiris's phallus. Also fires your earthly representation. So you have this sex cult spreading and beginning in Egypt. And that's why you have the obelisks, our representation of Osiris's phallus or Nimrod or Baal's shaft that is found throughout the world. Specifically in the Vatican. And the tallest one is found in Washington, D.C. Which is 555 feet tall, which is 6,660 inches tall, and that is representing Nimrod's shaft or Osiris's phallus inside the Vesica Pisces. 
inside the vesica pisces which is representing two two o's yes two o's coming together forming the vulva of a woman they represent the woman's anatomy going all the way back to eve because eve is the one who gave birth to cain who's of that wicked one so it's all this sex cult crazy stuff but it's amazing this is a universal religious system and we're all in it folks this is a mystery babylonian system so um we find almost all the pieces of osiris but the phallus phallus is latin for the greek phallos meaning penis or representation of the penis a symbol <coughs> representation of the penis penis that's what it means in your english language folks phallic of or relating to phallicism which is a phallic or a penis cult. You find it in Japan, you find it in India, you find it in Freemasonry, you find it in the world religions throughout. All right? So a similar representation of the penis. So phallicism is the worship of the generative principle as symbolized by the phallus. That's why in Freemasonry, right, you have the square and compass is representing the pyramid. The pyramid facing up is a representation of Osiris' phallus, the male, and facing downward, the V, the upside down triangle is representing the woman, and that is the, gen in the middle is the generative principle, the G, that's what it's saying, stands for. Um, gener generative, gener having the power or function of generating, originating, producing, or generating, folks. This is all about the mystery religion. Folks, we're finally in Egypt, folks. We're finally in Egypt. We didn't get any farther than this, but we're eventually gonna move to the Greek into the Roman and of course into America and then talk about what's happening with child worship, child sacrifice today, all the way going back to Mystery Babylon of sacrificing children. God bless you. Come to Jesus. Thank you.